I know there are a good number of you that are watching this video that are very familiar with Kenny Omega. Probably a lot of you that are fans of Kenny Omega. And a sizable portion of you want Kenny Omega to come to WWE. You wanted nothing more than for him to have been a surprise entrant in the 2018 Royal Rumble, maybe win the Royal Rumble, and go on to headline WrestleMania and begin a WWE run, where you have others of you who are probably of the conviction at this point that you don't want Kenny Omega anywhere near WWE for fear of what Vince, Hunter, and the Titan Tower machine would do to him as a performer and to his character. And frankly, honestly, I understand both sides of this equation. But the way I look at it right now, especially when I saw the recent interview he did, I think it was with uh, Justin Barrasso from Sports Illustrated, and Kenny Omega was talking about, among other things, he believed that Big E... Uh, was world championship material. I agree! But he was also praising Kofi and praising Xavier Woods, but also uh, frustrated a little bit with how maybe they had been booked and expressing concern about how the WWE would utilize him. I don't think it's an invalid concern. And when I look at Kenny Omega, and I do not mean this negatively at all. I really, truly don't, especially if you actually watch this video and listen to what I'm saying in this video. Uh, Kenny Omega, stay away from WWE. Stay far, far away from WWE. Here's, let's look at this. Kenny Omega is only 34 years old. He potentially has years yet before he really needs to worry about making a WWE run or being too late for the opportunity. He's got plenty of time. He's in theory just starting to enter the true peak of his power as a professional wrestler. And just because you could go, uh, just because other people in your position maybe would go, doesn't necessarily mean it's right for him, for him to go. And I honestly look at it and feel like there are still things for him to do in New Japan. With the stuff with the Bullet Club, I don't believe he's ever actually been world champion in New Japan. He's probably got another two to three years there where he's still a big time deal and he's still a top, top guy for that promotion. So I don't see where the urgency is there yet in terms of creatively or as a character, or as a performer, he's done everything he can there because I just don't simply think that's the case. I still feel like either there is plenty of time for him down the road to make an appearance in WWE and have a run in WWE. And in the meantime, I feel like there's still work for him to do and things for him to accomplish in New Japan. He certainly has helped the company, um, but there's more that can be done. Also looking at it, there's no guarantee that a WWE run would be as or more successful than what he's doing right now between Japan and ROH and different places that he appears. You look at Hideo Itami. When Kenta was signed by WWE, there was a big press conference and everything, and you had all these people on the internet pumping him all full of smoke. And the simple fact of the matter is, his run with the company has been bad. He got injured. The company didn't really know what to do with him. Combination of factors. Like Hideo Itami just never caught on. And isn't he now getting ready to debut on Tool 5 Live? You know what that means. Let's call it as we see it. So just because you think Kenny Omega, yes, I grant I think he's like 220, 225, so he wouldn't necessarily be able to lump it in the cruiserweights. The point I'm getting at is, though, is a lot of you would have thought Kenta would have been a world champ by now, not getting ready to debut on 205 Live. And then you look at what happened with Shinsuke Nakamura. They brought him in, sent him down to NXT for a period of time, even though he had done all types of things in Japan. And then when he gets to the main roster, you can sit there and say, well, he's getting ready to potentially wrestle AJ Styles at WrestleMania. He was the Royal Rumble winner. But his run on the main roster has been less than stellar. His main roster run, for a lot of Nakamura fans, not my opinion even, a lot of Nakamura fans, it has been very disappointing. And looking at it as somebody that didn't really follow him in Japan, didn't have a lot of familiarity with him in Japan, if you take that away and you take the NXT stuff away and you just focus on the WWE run, you look at a Nakamura and honestly, you have to say, what's the big deal? And the reality is without that other history there, without that other knowledge and of other performances and other work in other places, 
there is no big deal with him. So there's no guarantee that Kenny Omega comes in and he's still the same Bullet Club blazing guy in WWE. You just don't know. Because even like when they brought in Daniel Bryan, it really truly took a few years for the WWE to figure it out. It took him a few years to with CM Punk to figure it out. It took him a while with Seth Rollins to figure it out. They don't always figure it out right away. And sometimes they don't figure it out at all. Then on top of that, for Kenny Omega, since he's so entrenched in the Japanese strong style and the independent U.S. wrestling style, can he truly adjust to the WWE style of being a WWE superstar and being a sports entertainer, not just a professional wrestler? Furthermore, when looking at kind of trying to combine the two things, can WWE style mesh with his and can his style mesh with WWE? Would WWE believe in him? Would the powers that be, namely Vince McMahon, get behind him? Would they embrace what he does and try to accentuate those positives and mask some of those negatives? Or would there be an instant conflict and real trouble there? And would he be able to connect with a much larger WWE audience? Just because you could go to a major show for the WWE and you hear certain guys get all types of reactions and they're all types of over. The truth is the vast majority of those fans there are the hardest of hardcore WWE um, wrestling fans. And as a result, certain guys are naturally going to be more over. But when you're doing weekly shows and weekly tours, live events, house shows, you're doing your television tapings, smaller pay-per-views, it doesn't necessarily carry over the same. It just doesn't. Some guys could be massively over one night and the next week if they come out to crickets. Would Kenny Omega be able to connect with a much larger WWE audience? It is a fair question. It's a question you can ask any guy in his position in a similar situation. Then looking at it, right now Kenny Omega has a lot of control over what he does and how he does it, where he does it, when he does it, why he does it. He can make a very good living doing what he's doing. He's making a very good living now. He could continue to make a very good living and perhaps even a little bit of a better living over the next couple of years. All the while being able to control where he works, in a lot of cases who he works with, when he works, why he works, how he works, what he works for, and all of that. You sign on the dotted line for WWE as their version of an independent contractor, you lose a lot of that control. And you are really ultimately under the control of Vince McMahon and at the whim of Vince McMahon and his circle of cronies. And a lot of guys don't like that. A lot of guys dread that. A lot of guys wish they could get out from under that because they feel like it's bringing down their careers and understandably so. There is no guarantee that Kenny Omega comes in and the WWE doesn't just treat him like everybody else. Try to send him down to NXT. Try to repackage him. You could think they won't, but you don't know. They probably would let him keep the name, but there is no guarantee. They might let him work as he currently does. They might try to shake him up dramatically. We don't know. And for a guy like Omega, used to having a lot of flexibility and a lot of control, which is very valuable for him as a performer, to now go into a much more structured, controlled, scripted out environment for a WWE might be a bad fit for him. Then I look at it and I ask the question, can he handle the WWE schedule, the WWE lifestyle? WWE would instantly give him more face recognition than New Japan ever will on an international basis. Sorry, New Japan fans. New Japan is a wonderful company. They do great things. They do very nice wrestling business, but they are not the WWE and we know it in terms of size, scope, market share, international fit footprint, the WWE has them licked in every way. WWE though is also non-stop. So not only do you have to worry about potentially more face recognition to where now you'd have trouble going into any airport without somebody recognizing you, going in public without somebody recognizing you potentially at some point in time. You're doing this week in and week out, week in and week out, week in and week out. You kind of get it caught in the monotony of being a full-time WWE performer. And then on top of that, the responsibilities that go along with being a WWE superstar that aren't just performing on TV tapings, live events, house shows, and the pay-per-views. You got to worry about dealing with the media more. You got to do more public appearances. 
How would Kenny Omega do in those environments? Would he be able to handle that type of exposure that would come, especially if he was expected to be a big deal for the company? And not saying he doesn't do any of that work now, but we all know darn good and well it would be much different stateside with the WWE. He'd be having to go on ESPN, he'd be having to appear on all these big nationally syndicated radio shows and doing all these other appearances. It is dramatically different. And I do wonder if that wouldn't eventually catch up with him or potentially aggravate him a little bit. I just look at all of this and I say, I know someday he will have to make the jump. Because WWE is still by far the biggest wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it, company in the world. And ultimately, WWE does offer the chance to make the most money. If you believe that Kenny Omega, as the number one guy, let's say, down the road in a New Japan, could make more than a Kenny Omega as the number one guy in WWE, you're probably getting caught up a little too much in your love of New Japan. Because the math just doesn't back you up. It's not saying you can't make a decent living or make really good money in New Japan. But ultimately, guys like Nakamura and such make the jump for a reason. Someday Kenny Omega will make the jump for a reason. Because WWE does offer the most. It doesn't mean it always offers the best. But in terms of money, in terms of increasing profile and star power internationally for professional wrestling, WWE is by far the biggest. They are by far the best at that. WWE offers more big shows and big arenas to test and prove your drawing power, your star power, your ability to be a featured guy. The WWE has WrestleMania, and again, no offense to a Wrestle Kingdom or anything else, but they do pale in comparison to WWE's WrestleMania. Cities here in the U.S. and around the world bid for the right to host a WrestleMania. They make a week out of it. It's a whole event. It is a whole happening. It shuts cities down. And down the road, you may get that to a smaller degree with SummerSlam and Survivor Series and the Royal Rumble. And that is just an infrastructure of big shows in front of large audiences that New Japan just at this time cannot match. And at some point in time, Kenny Omega is 34 now, but as he gets closer to maybe 36, 37, 38, or maybe as he approaches 40, there's always going to be that what if of what if I never go to WWE? What will my legacy be? What if I don't go there? Am I costing myself money? And he, I'm sure at some point in time, he's not going to want to have to ask the question of what if I would have went? What would have happened if I went there? Why didn't I go there when I had the opportunity? I'm not saying he has to make the move now. And in fact, I feel like at this point in time, for the sake of the wrestling business a little bit, and for the sake of Kenny Omega as a performer, and all parties involved, the fans, how, whatever, I feel like the best thing for everybody is for Kenny Omega to stay away from the WWE, stay really, really far away from the WWE, and not even think about it for a couple of years. But eventually he should make the jump. Eventually he will have to make the jump. Eventually, I won't say he has no choice but to make the jump. But if he really wants to be remembered, like I believe he wants to be remembered, and he truly wants to be the big star of wrestling, like it seems like he may want to be, then he has to make that leap. Because ultimately, you could either go down as being a big fish in a decent-sized lake, or, when it comes to professional wrestling, you could be a shark in the ocean. Does he want to be the big walleye or catfish in the New Japan waters? Or does he want to potentially be a great white in the WWE ocean? Someday, Kenny Omega should make the jump, needs to make the jump, and in my opinion, does have to make the jump for a variety of reasons. But right now... I just don't feel like for anybody involved, it's the right time, it's the right place, it's the right moment. There's just a lot of things wrong with it. So for the time being, for me, Kenny Omega should stay the hell away from WWE. Far, far away.